Jose Luis and Daniel had been excellent friends since they were children, so when they finished high school and enrolled in university, it seemed logical that they would share an apartment in the capital city, since the small town where they had grown up was more than 100 kilometers away from there. It didn't take long for the two boys to get used to and enjoy the exciting college life, the excitement of the big city, and the freedom of not living under their parents' supervision. They made a lot of friends among their fellow students, and it was among them that they heard for the first time a well-known urban legend in that region, which told the story of the so-called bus that carries souls. The legend told that many years ago, shortly after the completion of the highway, there had been a coach driver who was very proud of his driving skills, as he was able to complete his journeys much more punctually and quickly than his peers. One day, wanting once again to impress his bosses and earn an extra, he did a service in the middle of a terrible storm hitting the region, ignoring his colleagues' recommendations to not to do it because it was very risky. As expected, the driver suffered a terrible accident with his coach in which he and all the passengers on it died. Ever since, the legend told, that ill-fated vehicle had roamed the highway, carrying the souls of its hapless passengers and its cursed driver, and capturing those foolish enough to board it at a stop. Daniel and Jose Luis stayed most weekends in their apartment in the capital city, but some, moved both by a certain nostalgia and by their parents' insistence, they went to their town to see their relatives and other friends who they had stayed there. They took a bus on Friday afternoon after school and returned on Sunday night. But one Friday, a series of mishaps caused them to miss the bus they were supposed to take. In other circumstances they would have returned to their flat and already gone to their town the following weekend, but that they had not special interest in going, because their old classmates from the high school had organized a meeting and they were not willing to miss it. So, desperate. They ran to the station desk hoping of being able to catch another bus. Unfortunately, the employee who attended them told them that no more buses left for their town until early the next morning. Jose Luis and Daniel were devastated, and they walked away dejectedly from the desk, discussing about what to do. They certainly weren't willing to miss the reunion with their old high school classmates in their town, they found it a hassle to go back to their flat and return early the next morning and they dreaded staying all night at the station. They were still discussing the matter when someone startled asking them what was the matter, and turning around, they saw that it was a bus driver. They had not seen where he had come from, nor had they heard him approach. He wore the uniform of the well-known company whose vehicles they took, although his appearance seemed somewhat old-fashioned. Jose Luis and Daniel explained to the man what had happened to them and expressed their discomfort at being able to miss the party with his friends. He then comforted them, condescendingly, and told them that sometimes a bus passed through that station, even late at night, that could take them to their town. The driver urged the two boys to think about it, and hardly giving them time to reply or thank him, he disappeared into the crowd. Daniel was excited by that revelation, but Jose Luis was more moderate. He was the one who had most advocated going back to the flat and returning to the station early in the next morning, as he considered it very uncomfortable, and even dangerous, to spend the night at the station. But Daniel did not think the same, he did not want to walk back to the flat, carrying his bags, only to return to the station early a few hours later, and he considered that they risked falling asleep or other complications and since they were there, it was preferable to wait for the bus that the strange driver had told them, and if it didn't appear, then they would catch the first one in the morning. Daniel's arguments finally decided the issue. So the two boys notified their parents, bought something for dinner and settled on the bench with their luggage, where they tried to make the wait more bearable by chatting among them or with friends on their cell phones. Time passed slowly, until the station gradually became empty and silent. Daniel and Jose Luis felt somewhat uneasy at finding themselves completely alone in that huge and lonely place, but except for the passage of a couple of night buses from which no one got on or off and the appearance of a homeless man who said something to them in a foreign language before leaving, nothing remarkable happened. Several hours of waiting had already passed and Jose Luis and Daniel felt impatient and tired. 
they began to think that perhaps the night bus that the driver had told them that afternoon was not going to pass, and that made them feel even more desperate, since there were still several hours left before the first bus in the morning. To make things worse, some thunders were heard in the distance, and some drops fell on the pavement, announcing that a storm was approaching. Jose Luis, who had reluctantly accepted his friend's proposal to spend the night at the station, began to complain bitterly about the situation they were in, which provoked a sour response from Daniel. The two friends were about to get into an argument when, suddenly, a bus made its appearance in the station, and Daniel and Jose Luis could read on its sign, with joy, that it was the one they were waiting for. The vehicle, almost without making a sound, stopped right in front of them, and opened the door and the luggage compartment. Nobody got out, but the two young, now excited by this unexpected arrival, quickly placed their bags in the compartment and went up. The interior of the vehicle was dim, and the driver, who seemed covered by a shadow, was just a shapeless figure behind the wheel. Jose Luis and Daniel greeted him and asked him about the amount of the ticket, but the driver, without saying a word, made a denial gesture with his hand, smiled and told them to go inside. That surprised Daniel and Jose Luis a little, but they ended up thinking that it was just a kind gesture from the driver, so they thanked him and walked down the aisle looking for free seats. Despite the dim light, the two boys noticed that the interior of the bus, while clean, looked quite dated. There were a few people sitting spread out, all awake, albeit with expressionless, blank stares. The murmur of the radio could be heard, but it was impossible to understand what it was saying, and even if the speaker was a woman or a man. It all seemed a bit strange, but the two young were so tired and weary of waiting that they ignored him and sat down. The bus started up, and soon it had left the city and was traveling at a regular speed on the highway. Jose Luis and Daniel barely talked or looked at their cell phones, because although they were happy that the bus they had been waiting for so anxiously had finally appeared, they were tired. It didn't take long for Daniel to fall asleep soundly, but Jose Luis, despite being equally tired, couldn't do the same, so for a while he entertained himself contemplating the landscape through the window. Fatigue, however, was gradually taking over Jose Luis who began to nod and woke up confusedly soon after, dominated by a drowsiness that ended up making him lose track of time. But despite the drowsiness that had invaded him, Jose Luis began to have the feeling that they had spent what seemed like hours inside the dark vehicle, and he realized that he could not discern where they were, because the landscape outside the window had gradually faded, no feature of the land could be distinguished. No lights of towns or houses or other vehicles could be seen, only the road, which seemed to extend into a darkness that was becoming more suffocating at times. A sudden and inexplicable restlessness began to take possession of him, and moved by that uneasiness he looked around, the other passengers were still sitting in their seats, all awake but with the same expressionless gaze as when he and Daniel had boarded. The indefinite murmur of the radio continued to be heard as well. Jose Luis settled down again and tried to calm down, telling himself that all this was nothing more than his imagination, and that they were surely about to reach his town. Next to him, Daniel continued to sleep soundly, but now Jose Luis felt unable to do so again. It was then that the boy spotted a magazine on the seat across the aisle from the one he was occupying, and not wanting to wake Daniel up or knowing what to do, he took it and began leafing through it. Strangeness, concern, and even fear began to take hold of Jose Luis as he turned the faded pages of that magazine, whose paper seemed fragile and brittle. Its articles spoke about events that had taken place a long time ago, about characters who had died years ago. Puzzled, he went back to the cover, and was shocked to see that it indicated a date from decades ago. It was impossible, it couldn't be that that magazine had been in that seat for so many years. The bus lurched then as if it had taken a sharp turn, and the magazine fell into his lap, splitting open to a page with an article he hadn't noticed before. The boy began to read it. It was about a bus that had suffered an accident in which all its occupants had died while driving in the middle of a storm. But when he saw the photo that accompanied the text, 
Jose Luis felt a shiver running through him, in it he could see the wrecked vehicle, which was none other than the one in which he and Daniel were traveling, and by its side there was its driver, who was the same one who had spoken to them at the station. It was the cursed bus that their university classmates had told them about, the bus that carries souls. Surprise and disbelief quickly gave way to terror. Jose Luis, desperate, abruptly woke up Daniel and hurriedly explained what was happening. Before his friend had woken up and understood what was going on, Jose Luis, without knowing what to do, got up and walked down the aisle towards the front of the bus, while the other passengers slowly turned towards him with blank stares. Behind him, Daniel could be heard, calling him and asking him what was happening. With hesitant steps, Jose Luis finally reached the driver's compartment, which was still enveloped in a shadow that made it impossible to distinguish his features. Excuse me sir, could I ask you a question? Jose Luis said with a small voice. The driver did not answer immediately, but the boy could see how he slowly turned towards him. Daniel came to his side at that moment. A sudden light then illuminated the passenger compartment making the driver visible to the two youngsters, whom they quickly recognized, it was the same one who had spoken to them at the station, the one who had suggested they take that night bus. The man looked at them blankly for a moment. Could you tell me where this bus is going, please? Jose Luis managed to ask almost stammering. A perverse smile twisted the driver's expression, which before the horrified eyes of Daniel and Jose Luis suddenly took on a cadaverous look. You have wanted to get on the bus that only travels on fateful nights, and now you will be its passengers for all eternity," the specter announced grimly with a cavernous voice. A sudden crimson luminosity flooded the interior of the bus. Jose Luis and Daniel turned and saw, paralyzed with terror, that the vehicle was driving along a dilapidated road on whose sides rose burning flames as tall as mountains. Behind them, the other passengers now had taken a rotten look like the chauffeur. The murmur of the radio had gradually gained in clarity, and now the boys could distinguish that it was lifeless voices, screaming, lamenting or singing impious songs, like choirs of tormented and damned souls. The agonized screams of the unfortunate boys were drowned out by those ill-fated voices and the roaring crackle of that demonic fire until finally an oppressive and inexorable darkness fell over them. A new day began at the bus station in the capital. With drowsy movements, the newsstand sales clerk distributed the press on the exhibitor. Some newspapers opened the front page with the news of the inexplicable disappearance of two young university students. Daniel and Jose Luis were the ones who appeared in the photos. Despite a thorough and methodical investigation, the police had been unable to find them or clarify the circumstances of their mysterious disappearance. Two girls passed in front of the establishment conversing absentmindedly. One of them was telling the other the story of the so-called bus that carries souls. 